Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So welcome back to this mini series where I was showing you how to build a React application that's backed by the blockchain. So check out the first video in this series if you haven't already. And also be sure to subscribe to this channel and thumbs up the video as always. And if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. All right, so let's get back into the project. So in the last video, we left off where we had created this, um, you know, React app. And we kind of started off with this main React component where we basically just wired everything up. We got the project rolling. We kind of made a Hello World app. We showed this on the page. So I'll go ahead and start up the server. I'll say npm run start to see where our progress was. So this, I have an app running, so I'm going to run it on a new port, and we can see this here. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is keep building off this progress, and we're going to actually wire our app up to a smart contract so that we can build a blockchain-backed op application. All right, so here's our app where we left off. And in this tutorial, I'm actually going to build upon another tutorial that's already on my channel. So this is a tutorial where I show you how to build a to-do list with Ethereum. I just released this pretty recently. So if you go to my website and go to this blockchain app tutorial, this is dappuniversity.com forward slash articles forward slash blockchain app tutorial, you can build this um, Ethereum to-do list step by step. Um, and so if you haven't seen that tutorial, you might want to check that out. Uh, but if you're just interested in kind of getting the smart contract from that tutorial so that you can follow along with this one, um, you can either grab the code from this article or you can just go to GitHub at getdappuniversity.com, or excuse me, github.com forward slash dappuniversity and find the ETH to-do list. So I'm going to use that smart contract for this tutorial, okay? And basically, we're going to take this uh, tutorial that I built here in this full-length article, um, and we're going to basically use the same smart contract, but build a React application instead of the sort of plain vanilla JavaScript application that we built in that tutorial. Okay, so um, I'm first going to just open up the uh, build contracts directory in that other tutorial. And this is basically just the, the JSON ABI file which is um, just a JSON representation of the smart contract that we built, the to-do list smart contract that we built. And I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to just copy this. And I'm going to open my text editor. I'm just going to create an empty file. And I'm just going to uh, set the syntax as JSON. And I'm just going to copy the ABI part. So this is a big file that contains more than just the ABI. But all I want to do is copy what's underneath this ABI key right here. It should be an array, okay? And inside um, this source directory, you know, we were working with this app.js file. I wanna create a new file here. All right, so right next to this app.js file, I wanna create um, config. So we'll call this config.js. All right, we see a new file is created here. And inside of here, I just wanna store the ABI. So what we wanna do is um, store that file. So we const um, say to do list ABI. All right. So the reason we're doing this is so that we can actually talk to the smart contract in our application. I'll format this a little bit. All right. We're actually going to export this. Export const to do list ABI. All right. I'm going to save that. So in order to talk to this smart contract, we need to know a few things. We need to know all the functions that are on the smart contract. That's what the ABI does. It kind of describes the behavior of the smart contract. It tells us all its functions and you know their arguments and things like that. And we also need to know where it is in the blockchain. So in order to do that, we need the uh, we need the address. So we'll say export const uh, to do list address. That will be equal to empty string for now. We haven't added it. Okay. So how do we get this address? Well, we need to deploy it to a blockchain. So if you've done the other tutorial already, um, you can just go into that project directory and do that. Uh, but if not, you'll want to actually clone this repo, right? So you want to basically take this URL uh, and go to your terminal um, and type like git clone and then paste in this, okay? 
So I'm not going to do that because I've already got it installed. But I'm going to go to that other uh, repository. So I'm going to say cd uh, eth to do list. Okay. And I'm going to migrate this to the blockchain. So also in that other tutorial, you know, we were using the Ganache personal blockchain to build our smart contracts. This is Ganache right here. And I've got, you know, directions in that, you know, full length tutorial on my website about how to set up Ganache, how to run smart contracts on a blockchain. That's much more the feat, you know, the purpose of that tutorial is to t really teach you the blockchain side of things. And that's why I'm doing a separate tutorial to focus on React. Um, you know, it's just sort of a different, uh, different focus. So, if you get stuck running Ganache, just make sure you check out this tutorial. So I'm going to go to that uh, application uh, directory, and I'm going to say uh, truffle migrate dash dash reset. I've got Ganache running, so this is going to deploy a new copy of the smart contract to Ganache. All right, looks like it worked. So I'll minimize that, and I'm going to open this in Sublime Text and find the ABI. Say build contracts uh, to do list.json, and the very bottom we'll see the address. Okay, scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see the address for it right here. So, I want to copy this value, close it, and we're going to paste it inside of here. So, this is the address of the smart contract as it's deployed to Ganache. All right, and if you start restart Ganache and redeploy the contracts, you're going to want to update this value. Okay. All right, so I'm going to exit out of this. I don't need it anymore. All right. So the reason we're pulling all this data in manually is because I wanted to do something different with this tutorial than the other tutorials on my channel. Uh, most of the other tutorials, you know, the focus has been uh, using like the Truffle contract library and things like that. And I really wanted to get outside of Truffle for this particular tutorial and focus on React and some other ways of building dApps that are more uh, based on React and Web3. So we're actually going to use Web3 uh, by itself to talk to this smart contract, okay? And we needed both the ABI and the address in order to do that, okay? So in order to, you know, talk to this smart contract with Web3 by itself, uh, I need to import this new data that I just stored in this config file. I'll do that like this. I'll say import to-do list ABI and to-do list address from config, okay? So now we have both of the uh, pieces of data that we need to instantiate the smart contract with Web3.js. All right, so what I'm gonna do is after we've, you know, gotten the accounts, I'm gonna load the smart contract. So I'll say const to-do list equals new uh, web3.eth contract. We'll pass in the ABI, which is, you know, this big thing. And then we pass in the address, which is the address of the smart contract on the blockchain. And so now we have a uh, copy of this, and we're going to store it to state as well. Do it like this. So now let's just console log uh, to-do list. Let's see if it works. Open up our web browser. All right. So it looks like at least something's right. No errors at least. So now let's actually try to um, do the next thing, which would be I want to read some data from this smart contract. Let's actually read out the number of tasks. So if you remember on the last tutorial, the to-do list, um, it keeps track of the number of tasks that are in it with the task count. And we use that to actually build the tasks list. So if our to-do list has a task count of five, we know that there are five to-dos in that list. Okay, and then we can basically say, give me to-do item number one, give me task number two, give me task number three, and we'll just render those out one by one. So I'll set the initial state of uh, task count to zero. We'll list that out here. We'll say task count. We'll say this dot state task count. Okay, and then I will uh, basically read the task count just like we did with this. We'll say const task count equals await to do list methods. All right, task count we call a function, and then we actually call it. 
and we're using the async await pattern to wait for this value to come back from the blockchain. And whenever it's done, we'll just uh, update the state like this, okay? And what this does is, uh, you know, this is basically an ES6 syntax for this, task count, task count. It's the same thing. And that's what I did up here too. So here we did a count, a count like this, and that's because we're setting something different. But if, if the key is the same name as the value, this is just a shortcut. So this should be one because we have a default task on the blockchain from the other tutorial. I'll actually just open that up and show you really fast. So if I pull that up, you know, here's the smart contract we're working with. Uh, see contracts, to-do list. Here's uh, you know the task count. And here is, um, yeah, you can just see that. So I'm actually gonna pull this over into our other project just so that we have a reference. I'll put that here, okay. Plus terminal up, okay, all right. So now let's go refresh the page and see if the task count's listed on the page. Yep, we see task count one, right? That's what I meant to show you is that this has a default task whenever the constructor is run for the smart contract. All right, so now then this is the next thing. Uh, the next thing will be to port over some of the UI for the project. Um, we actually have like a bootstrap layout. Like if you go look at the application preview from this tutorial, um, you can see like we've got this, this uh, bar up here. Um, we've got a, uh, you know, like a form input and then a task list below. So we basically want to recreate this UI inside of our React app. So I'll just go, um, you know, on GitHub into the source directory, find the index.html file. We'll uh, port some of this over. First, I'll take the CSS. I'll just copy this and we'll put it into the, um, let's put in the app.css file. So I'll just pull this over. So for now, we don't want to do uh, content display none. So let's take that out. I'm gonna take this away. All right, so that'll keep our basic CSS. And then inside of here, we wanna clear out all this. So with React, it's important to note that anytime you return uh, content from a, from a component, it has to be wrapped in a, in a top level div tag. We don't want this to be a container, but we do need a basic div. I couldn't just say div one, div two, div three. It has to be wrapped in a parent. Okay. so. Let's go back to GitHub and find the content, the HTML content. I'm gonna copy everything from the body. Let's actually just uh, do it like this, sorry. <laughs> Let's do the raw. Let's copy everything inside of here. Say div. So everything from nav down to this bottom div, we'll copy. All right, so here we'll say this. We're gonna have to format some things because there is a little bit that gets lost in translation when we're moving to React. Um, so we, we can see some syntax uh, highlighting errors here. A few things are, pr are problematic. So in React, um, we can't use class inside this HTML. We have to use class name. So I'll just go through this. Say class name. All right. We wanna take this on submit handler off. I think these form inputs need uh, that. Yeah, okay, so let's go back to our app. There's probably some warnings and some errors. All right, so I think it doesn't like this uh, style here. Let's take this out. Save that and see what happens. Okay, so we've got some basic styling uh, from our other application in our React app. It doesn't look like much, you know, stuff's kind of misformatted and kind of thrown throughout the page. We'll fix a lot of that later, but for now we just want to wire this up to the blockchain and kind of do this, you know, one feature at a time. So first we'll just list the task out and we'll put the real task here, okay? Let's go back to our React app and let's see how to do that. So if you remember a second ago, I said that we basically are using the task count to determine how many tasks are in the to-do list. And then we're gonna create a loop that will say, you know, for every task in this count, you know, one through five, one through 10, one through 100, whatever it is, um, we're gonna take each integer in that range 
and we're going to call um, task, the task function, to read the task out of the solidity mapping from the smart contract. And I'll explain more about that in the other tutorial, so check that out if you haven't already. Um, but basically, you know, there's no way to just get all the tasks at one time from the smart contract in solidity. It doesn't let us do that. So to fetch them one by one. And we'll do that like this. I'll just paste in some code here to show you fast. We'll go to uh, this like this. All right, so let me explain this. Basically, we're saying for every integer inside of task count, every positive integer inside of task count, from one all the way to the, to the counts. In this case, it's just one to one. If it was 10 tasks, it'd be one through 10. Um, we're going to uh, fetch the to-do list from the blockchain. Uh, sorry, the task from the blockchain from the to-do list. So task, so to-do list methods, tasks, pass in the current task, fetch them one at a time, and it comes back, we're gonna update the state um, to put the task inside there. So we need to have a way to do this. Inside of the state object, we'll initialize this as tasks, uh, empty array. So this is the ES6 spread operator, which basically means we're gonna uh, make this a new array, which is going to contain all of this old tasks array inside of state with the new one. So this is a ES6 convention, and you'll see this a lot in React projects where we add you know, new items to new arrays uh, because we want to treat them as immutable objects, which you can talk about more. Uh, it's kind of the scope of another video, but um, that's the reason why you know this is here and it looks like this. Okay, so let's just console log out all the tasks, see if it works. We'll say this to state tasks. All right, let's see if it worked. There we go. There's the first task. Boom. Okay. So now let's actually list out the tasks on the page. What we want to do is uh, for every task in the list, we want to render out this, you know, task template here, and we want to basically put the content that we fetched from the blockchain that's inside the state object right now, and put in the template. So I'm gonna clear out this and paste in some code. Boom. So let me explain this. What we do is iterate through the tasks inside of state, we just map over it, and for each task, we basically render out this template. We just click, we say return here, um, and we pass in this template that's gonna get returned. Now one thing to notice is we have to assign every item in this list a unique key. That's what this uh, index is. So basically this is the item in the array, this is the index inside the array. That's just part of how React uh, keeps track of the number of children that are rendered out on the DOM. It has to have a key or an, an index to know which one's unique. Um, and so then inside of the content, we actually read the content from the task here. So this is basically allows us to execute JavaScript inside this HTML code. So, and also this is an ES6 arrow function and we have to uh, call return here because we're using this type of arrow function, which I'm not really sure what it's called. It's, there are different types of arrow functions. You could do it like this for single line functions, but this is like a multi line arrow function you have to use return. So anyways, uh, let's go to the app and see that our new task is there. Boom. Okay, so that's it for this video, guys. Hope you all liked this. Um, in the next video, we'll probably either add, new, yeah, we'll add new tasks and we'll also check them off. So again, hope you all enjoy this mini series. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and you know, head over to, over to dappuniversity.com, and you can download my course for free. You can check out, you know, this article where I show you how to build the smart contract from this tutorial step by step with this long, lengthy article and this 90-minute tutorial. Um, yeah, so hope you all like this video and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks again for watching Dapp University.